Okay, y'all, this is it. The video you've been waiting for. The video where I share with you the hair products that I've been using to help overcome my protein overload. Hi, I'm Leah from the Relax Scout Beauty channel, and if you are new here, welcome. If you have watched several of my other videos, thank you for tuning in again. Before we get any further, if you're not a subscriber of the Relax Scout Beauty channel, please go ahead and subscribe by hitting the red button down below. And if you would like to know whenever I upload a new video to YouTube, you can let YouTube send you notifications by hitting the bell button. Now, if you didn't know that I've been dealing with protein overload, I don't know where you've been because I've literally been talking about it in my videos, blog posts, and Instagram for about two months now. So to give you a quick recap, I have been dealing with hair breakage for quite a while now and hadn't been able to pin down what the issue was. It got so bad at one point that I literally was thinking I was going to have to cut all the hair off of my head and just plain start over. I then realized after doing some digging and taking a look at hair products that I was using that I was dealing with protein overload because pretty much every single product I was using on my hair, whether or not it talked about strengthening or not, um, had some kind of protein ingredient in it. So my hair just became so overloaded with protein that it got dry, brittle, and was just snapping off. One of the first things to do once you realize that you've got protein overload is to remove all of the hair products that have protein in them from your hair regimen. For me, I wanted to completely remove any protein from my hair regimen, whether or not the product had a protein ingredient at the top of the list or the bottom of the list. I didn't care, I just wanted protein out so that I could be protein free for quite a while. So when I did that, I basically ended up with this pile of hair products that I could not use. And here you're seeing what that pile of hair products look like. And to be honest, I think there's like two or three hair products that I actually just threw away because they were kind of um, a few months away from possibly expiring anyway because I'd had them for a while and I wasn't really using them that much or I didn't really like them. And so I just threw those in the trash. And then <laughs> let me show you what I had left. I had this product, this product, and this product left. Three hair products, okay? Just three. Two are leave-in conditioners. These two right here are leave-in conditioners, and this is a rinse out conditioner. No deep conditioner, no shampoo. Seriously? So because I had a rinse out conditioner and two leave-in conditioners, I need to find other products that are protein-free, and so I scoured the web for shampoos and deep conditioners that I could use on my hair. And let me tell you, it is not easy to find stuff that is protein free. And it didn't help that I also wanted to stay away from hair products that had coconut oil in them for a while because coconut oil can help to keep protein intact, protein bonds intact on your hair. And so I wanted to break them up and get rid of them. I didn't want to keep them. So it didn't make any sense to use products that had an ingredient that was just going to keep me in this state of protein overload versus helping me to get rid of it. So first off, we're going to start with the shampoo that I've been using, and I've actually been using two shampoos, both from the same brand, Shea Moisture. Um, this is one that I've been using for a while, actually, but it stopped in favor of the other shampoos and ended up having all kinds of protein in them that I didn't realize. But this is the Peace Rose Oil Complex Nourish and Silken Shampoo. It's got date palm and camellia extracts, and it's supposed to hydrate and soften dry and brittle hair. One of the things that I like about this shampoo is this smell. Mm, it smells like roses. I do have to say though that the rose smell now from when I first tried it like probably maybe a year ago now um, The rose smell smells a little more artificial than it did when I first started using it But it's still a nice smell and it doesn't linger very long But the main reason that I started using this again on my hair during the protein overload phase is that it's really, like I said, it's supposed to hydrate and soften dry and brittle hair. And with protein overload, my hair, of course, was dry because it was totally coated with protein and it felt very brittle and it was breaking. And so this, the ingredients in this really helped to soften my hair. And I guess it was helping to break up the protein bonds. I'm not totally certain or sure, but I feel like my hair, every time I would use this shampoo, started to feel softer and got in a much better state. And so it makes total sense when I look at how these ingredients are supposed to work together. I mean, you've got the Peace Rose Oil Complex, which is a blend of Alpine 
damask and musk rose oils it's supposed to nourish and soak in your dry hair the day palm extract is supposed to impart a moisturizing protective layer that smooths the hair cuticles and then the camellia leaf extract is a natural antioxidant that's properties deliver essential benefits to improve hair softness and luster and i have to say that it really did help me a lot the other shampoo is like i said also from shea moisture it's their um, low porosity protein free shampoo it's got spearmint extract and clary sage supposed to moisturize and balance moisture resistant hair so when it came down to trying to find hair products that didn't have protein in it, I just like, oh my goodness, it just hit me. Shea Moisture has their protein-free line, so why not try some products from it? And I got this, this shampoo, and I was like, we'll see how this shampoo works. But I really like it. It really cleanses really, really well. A little bit goes a long way. Um, the smell of it, let's see. It's, I mean, I can smell the tea tree oil, which is like nice but it's got a kind of musky smell like the peace rose oil is really sweet this one is more musky and more earthy but i've already bought like this is the first i think this is the first bottle that i bought i've already bought another bottle even though i'm like not even halfway through with this one it was like on sale somewhere and i was like we're gonna keep using this shampoo for as long as i deem necessary so let's talk about conditioners next so as I had mentioned, I had a rinse out conditioner and two leave-in conditioners that were from my original hair regimen that didn't have protein in them that I could use on my hair still during my protein overload phase. But I didn't have a deep conditioner that didn't have coconut oil or some kind of protein in it. That sent me on a mad dash to find one and I ended up finding one from a brand that I actually had used two products for before and both I did not like. One I didn't like so much that I did a video about how bad that product was and it's one of my, I think, most watched videos. I'll actually link it in case you're curious. Um, the brand is Carol's Daughter. But I found that they had this hair mask um, that's the Rasool Clay Active Living Hair Care Softening Hair Mask. And that is really what drew me to this. Like, it has no protein in it and it helps to soften hair. So here's what it says all about this mask. It says, when your active lifestyle is hard on your hair, it can look and feel overworked, dull, brittle, and lifeless. So soften it up with the system of Rasool Clay shampoo and hair mask to replenish moisture for revived hair. These blended formulas with Moroccan Rasool Clay, aloe juice, cactus flower, absorb oil leaving your hair revitalized touchably soft recharged and ready to take on the rest of your day now i have to say with this hair mask um here i'll open it up for you so you can kind of see what it looks like it's a little no it doesn't really move much here's what it looks like it's got a putty kind of smell to it it's not the best smelling but it's not like a nasty smell um, I do have to say like this goes on really well. I can't remember if it, it has a decent amount. Yes, it does have a decent amount of slip. And I have to say the first time that I used it in conjunction with the shampoos that I talked about, oh, my hair felt so much softer. Um, it didn't like solve all of my protein overload problems with one use, but it did soften my hair quite a bit. And so I've used it pretty consistently just about every shampoo and every time I wash my hair and I use it, my hair just feels softer and softer and softer. The one thing I have noticed is that while it does really soften up my hair, it really doesn't condition it. And that's probably because, like it says here, that the blended formula with the Moroccan Rasool Clay, aloe juice, and cactus flower absorb excess oil. So I feel like it's probably absorbing the natural oils that are in my hair, that are coming from my scalp. And so that's, and it's not adding anything back, so it's not really conditioning my hair. But it's not drying out my hair at all. Um, and I think that I've been able to balance that out with other hair products that I'm using, but I do feel like for some reason, I don't know, and this could just be totally in my head, but I feel like the clay has kind of helped with taking some of that protein off of my hair and making it, um, helping to break down those protein bonds. Like I said, I could totally be making this up. It could totally be just in my head, but I really feel like this um, hair mask has really helped my hair a lot during the protein overload phase. 
Okay, and then this product here is a rinse out conditioner. It's one that I actually did a video on and I'll link it for you. It's the Texture by Cantu Leave-In and Rinse Out Hydrating Conditioner. I've never used it as a leave-in, I only use it as a rinse out. And it's supposed to moisturize and soften strands. And it's funny because I actually bought this and started trying it a few weeks before I learned that I had protein overload. And um, by using this in my hair regimen as I'm trying to overcome the protein overload, I feel like it's helped quite a bit. Um, I've used it as a pre-poo. I've also used it in between my wash and my hair mask because like I said, the hair mask isn't really that conditioning. So I feel like by adding this as an extra step in between the shampoo and the hair mask has really helped to make that non-conditioning aspect of the hair mask not as big a deal as it possibly could have been. So really with this um, conditioner, it's supposed to quench thirsty strands and it's got shea butter to hydrate and nour nourish, spearmint oil to soothe the dry scalp, and canola oil to minimize split ends. And it does say, like I said, it could be a rinse out or leave in. I only use it as a rinse out conditioner and it's been pretty good for me so far. The other two products that I had left in my hair um, stash after I eliminated everything with protein was this one from TGIN. Thank God it's natural. It's their green tea super moist leave-in conditioner. It's got green tea and argan oil and it's a lightweight moisturizing leave-in conditioner for all hair types and it's really just supposed to um, really moisturize your hair and I have to say like this was like a lifesaver during my pro like right before my protein ever got really really bad like this was the only thing that was keeping my hair moisturized and from totally completely breaking all off like this was great and so it's still working for me and keeping my hair hydrated and soft and so this is not going away anytime soon and then I was also using this from Shea Moisture. It's their sugarcane extract and metafoam seed um, silicone free miracle style a leave-in treatment with marshmallow root. Whew, that's a long name. It's a leave-in treatment that's supposed to have to tangle, nourish, nourish, soften, cut dry in time, add shine, smooth and reduce frizz, enhance silkiness, and protect against thermal environmental damage. So I've been using this on my wet hair even before I realized that protein overload as not necessarily a leave-in conditioner but as a heat protectant and it really also helps with um, detangling as well I, I do have to say it's got a decent amount of slip for me and so because it doesn't really have any protein in it um, I kept it in my hair regimen and have been using it and it's been really great for my hair so far and then yes I'm a leave-in conditioner junkie so I've got one more and this one is like the sister to um, one of the shampoos that I have. This is the leave-in detangler from the Shea Moisture Low Porosity um, Protein Free line. And oh my gosh, this stuff has been great for my hair as well. Um, particularly during the last few, like three weeks I think I've been using this. It keeps my hair nice and moisturized, particularly when I mix it with some um, grapeseed oil goodness the hydration that my hair has is crazy it's really thick and it's got a similar scent as the shampoo it's like it's not it's just like I said it's earthy and everything I'm just I'm not in love with the smell but I don't really hate it and like I said this stuff is thick like look at this look at this it's not even down there okay I did a little bit of shaking and now it's down there but this stuff is thick. It's hard to get out. I have really liked it. It's been good on my hair. I don't think though that I'm going to continue to use it after I get past the protein overload. It's for low porosity hair. And while I think the shampoo will still work for me, I'm not quite sure that this will. Sometimes, it, not sometimes, I feel like before when I first started using it was having issues with my hair, it was definitely really sinking into my hair. I feel like now that I've kind of gotten to a point where my hair is almost like where it had been before the protein overload started. It's starting to feel like it sits on my hair a little bit more instead of sinking in. So I don't think it's something that I'm going to keep on using, but if I ever did find myself, God forbid, in a place where I was having a protein overload again, I would definitely get this leave-in conditioner back out. 
Okay, so those are all the hair products that I've been using on my hair to help overcome my protein overload. It seems like it's a lot, but it's not really. It's actually, let me count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven hair products. That doesn't account for any natural oils that I've been using on my hair um, to help like seal in moisture, but these are, like I said, the main hair products that I've been using. If you've used any of these products, I'd like to hear what your thoughts are about them. Did you like them? Do you not like them? Are they part of your regular regimen or not? And if you have any hair products that you like to use on your hair that are protein free, you can also leave those in the comments below. If you like this video, if you found it helpful, please go ahead, give it a thumbs up and share it with everyone that you know. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next one.